All right, welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Monday, September 2nd, 2019. Want to give you a quick update on what is happening. First, let me go over some space weather conditions really quick. Uh, we have been covering Hurricane Dorian for the last couple of days now. Uh, right now, our solar wind speeds, they were at 723 kilometers per second, but now they have shifted down a little bit to 677.5 kilometers per second with a density of 1.4. We do have a sunspot that is now turning Earth-facing AR2748 and does not pose any threats for solar flares. Sunspot number 12, that ended a 25-day consecutive streak of sunspots without sunspots. And right now for 2019, we do have 169 days without spots. Our KP indices finally are below storm levels. Right now we are sitting at a KP of three and a 24 hour max of five. And looking at our SDO, which we do not have up on screen right now, but as far as large coronal holes, we are kind of monitoring the southern part of our star right now. That should not really be affecting anything as far as Earth's magnetic field. But still important to note that we have seen uh, solar storms now for the last almost three days and increased solar wind is still bombarding Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere with highly charged particles. I also want to note real quick that today, September 2nd, marks the 160 year anniversary of a geomagnetic megastorm that happened, uh, the Carrington event, of course, we all know about. That happened on September 2nd, 1859 where back then the technology that we have now is nowhere uh, where, it was, where it was back then. So we were just dealing with uh, telegraph lines that were down. If we would have had a full scale power grid, uh, it would have been a total complete co collapse of our grids worldwide after that event. But uh, I'll probably talk more about that in tonight's broadcast. And let's go ahead and give you the update currently on Hurricane Dorian. Right now, Dorian has been downgraded to a category five, I'm sorry, a category four. Maximum sustained winds right now are 155 miles per hour with wind gusts near uh, 190. Now, we are reporting that the pressure is also um, gone up to 922 millibars. So at last report, we were talking about a 916. The pressure is starting to come up just a little bit on this particular storm. So the question is, where is it going to head? When is it going to make that northern turn? We're still waiting for that. Uh, right now, looking at several radars and NOAA satellites. And if you guys can see down there in the bottom where it says now playing news radio, um, you can start to see this storm is beginning to make a lift to the north just ever so slightly so hopefully this turn is going to happen the bad news is that overnight tonight last night we saw this storm um enter towards freeport aboko islands is that what it's aboko Albuco. i'm sorry Albuco uh was in this path last night we were listening to a broadcast from that area. We lost contact with them. Unfortunately, I'm sure the power was going out. Uh, but I remember uh, leaving the broadcast somewhere around midnight or so and uh, drifting off to sleep. Woke up this morning and I couldn't believe that the storm had slowed down from six miles per hour. It was speeding up last night. It slowed down to one mile per hour and basically just stayed in that same region. So not much movement here from this storm it has been wreaking havoc on this island uh, i can only imagine and mari is going through right now looking at aftermath footage uh, i can only imagine uh, how much we're actually going to see today as far as the aftermath goes with this uh, eye wall mari's walking over here i feel like she has something to add i don't have anything to add i was just going to hit play i'm just assembling footage from uh when the storm first hit in the Bahamas last night. So in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, if you see the video pausing and stopping, that's just me. I'm actually editing live while we're streaming. Just, 
I'm if I'm gonna have the video up, I might as well share it. Well, I'm give so, you guys something else to look at. Absolutely, thank you. <laughs> it's um, really sad though uh, it, it, to hear it, the terror in their voices last night uh, in the live radio broadcast. It, I, I don't even have any words. It, it just gave me chills. They were at, they were absolutely terrified. And I can't even imagine what they were hearing as the winds whipped around them yeah. while they were reporting until the power went out. Uh, they were terrified to the point where they were pretty much just the the, the last few uh, moments of it. They were praying, you know, that's, and begging yep. to God to to just keep them safe. The last two hours we listened to their broadcast, there was quite a bit of prayer going on. There was some gospel music being played. I mean, can you imagine sitting in your home waiting for the storm to pass you? And then it slows down to one mile per hour as we're just sitting here. I, I mean, the destruction on this island has got to be unreal. Uh, the storm that just sat there over and over so and over. They're saying that around the eye of the storm, you're you're getting like a almost like a tornado force of like an yeah. EF three EF3, tornado, yeah. but it's not moving. It is just, it's like the island has been put into a blender. And this is truly tragic, catastrophic what we're watching right now and we haven't even begun to see the aftermath nope. sadly and, and this the this storm's going to be here all week actually looking at some of the hurricane cones right now and i mean we're going to have hurricane force winds near new jersey on friday so this storm is projected to make this turn that we're all waiting on which right now i think it's slightly starting to make that lift but once it does uh, it's going to rake the entire coast of South Carolina, North Carolina. That, I believe, is going to see the worst of the flooding, especially in North Carolina as well. Charleston's already begun evacuation. Smart move. I know North Carolina called for a state of emergency several days ago. Smart move. Uh, but looking at the latest track of this storm, Dorian is going to wreak havoc along the U.S. coast. And the areas that are probably going to get it the worst I'm just speculating because every time I watch the run, I see the same thing over and over. Somehow Jacksonville gets included in there and then the storm moves up the coast away from land and then makes somewhat of a landfall close to a landfall in South Carolina through North Carolina and just heavy amounts of rain is expected with this particular storm. So uh, we are not out of the woods yet. The coverage on Hurricane Dorian unbelievably is going to last through the week this week uh this storm is not in a hurry it doesn't have an agenda it's just going to do what it wants and right now we see it meandering across freeport and i, I think hopefully uh at some point today we will start to see this storm shift further north and at right at this point all of these tracks that we've seen all these spaghetti models uh, a lot of them are still saying we are not going to see a direct impact on Florida as far as landfall this storm will make a turn now it's gonna create some flooding issues uh, there are coastal flooding watches up and down Florida right now as we speak Jacksonville Florida we were covering a radio station out of Jacksonville and their uh, mandatory evacuation actually went into effect at 822 a.m. this morning uh, a little commentary the Jacksonville DJ there at 10 a.m. and beyond uh, this guy you know, I had to turn the station off. We were listening to it, listening to the news, the the very beginning of the morning until 10 a.m. That Jacksonville radio station is very professional, did a great job relaying traffic information, evacuation information, uh, clips of what's going on right now. And then they get this guy coming on at 10 a.m. in the morning. And, you know, it's like he's been drinking all night or something. So trying to make light of this news is not uh, very respectful at this point. It's insulting. Uh, there is probably massive amounts of loss of life, loss of structure here, and uh, there's nothing to be uh, taken lightly about this storm. So, folks, please prepare. Uh, if you live along the East Coast in Florida, uh, southern Georgia, especially Charleston, South Carolina, all the way up the coast through North Carolina, they are now doing uh, mandatory evacuations. And please heed these warnings. There, here's a look at some of the storm surge as well. Mari is editing that footage and this was where the first pictures of aftermath came in from this storm, guys. 18 to 23 foot of storm surge 
from this particular store. On top of that, uh, we were also dealing last night with what was called a king tide, which is a abnormally higher tide than usual on high tide. So on top of a, a king tide, we had an 18 to 23 foot storm surge. Guys, do you realize everything that had to come together for this storm to be this powerful? It wasn't just a hurricane that developed in the tropics. We've got space weather. We've got lunar forcings to look at. We've got all this high tide stuff. There's so many things, sunspots, solar wind, geomatic storms, uh, warm water temperature near Florida and during the Bahama Islands. Wind so, shear. what's that? Wind shear, dust, wind shear. Everything. everything was just perfect for this storm to thrive, especially the space weather, the storms that we had from Friday through Saturday, and the increase in solar wind, which is bringing more cosmic rays into our atmosphere. So, very, very, very concerning storm. We are not out of the woods by any means. Mari, would you like to add something? I would also like to address the rumors of people saying that the wind speeds are lower. I, I've been getting comments after comments after comments in the chat saying that this storm isn't real. And to me, following the weather and following the storm and watching it unfold with all the technical details that uh, it involves all the elements that put together this storm. For people, a group of conspiracy theorists to say this is, is some kind of fake thing that's not really happening, I, I'm just, I'm just, I don't have no words, it's shocking. Please do not latch on to conspiracy theories regarding this storm as being fake. People's lives have been destroyed by this. And you can see by the footage in the lower left-hand corner, this is no joke, and who knows what this is going to bring to the coast. Yep. Do not take the storm warnings lightly. If your area is saying evacuate and get out, get out. Please take heed to all the warnings local officials are releasing, please. That's a, that's a very important uh, message there, Mari. If your local, your local government is telling you to evacuate. Do not listen to any kind of crazy rumors that this storm is not real. It is very real. It's causing tons of destruction. It's ripping structures to pieces. Uh, these local government officials that are instructing you to evacuate are doing so to save your life. So it is dangerous to listen to any kind of conspiracy theory right now that this storm is not real, that this storm's winds were never that high. Nevertheless, we are showing you the footage of all the damage. We are showing you the satellite images of how dangerous the storm is. Please heed all of your warnings that you are receiving from your local government. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this early. Or this that's going to do it for this edition of our update. Again, Hurricane Dorian has been downgraded to a Category Four. Wind speeds of 155 miles per hour, moving still at one mile per hour west with a pressure of 922 millibars. Guys, stick around for continuous coverage of Hurricane Dorian. We'll be back later to give you guys another update. Just go back on the screen.